Hello everyone, my name is Madhuri Gupta, working as an assistant professor in the Department of Computer Science, Chhattisgarh Swami Vivekanand Technical University, Bhilai. Welcome everyone to another exciting journey in the world of artificial intelligence. Today we are dealing deep into the fascinating realm of search algorithm and their role in artificial intelligence problem solving. Before that, let us have a quick recap of Missionary's Cannibal's problem. The Missionary's and Cannibal problem is a classic puzzle that involves safely transporting missionaries and cannibals across a river using a boat while adhering to certain constraints. Here is a quick recap. Problem statement. There are three missionaries and three cannibals on one side of a river along with a boat that can carry a maximum of two people. The goal is to transport all three missionaries and all three cannibals to the other side of the river without violating the following constraints. At any given time, the number of cannibals on either side of the river should not exceed the number of missionaries, otherwise the cannibals would eat the missionaries. Objective. The objective is to find a series of boat trips that successfully transports all missionaries and cannibals across the river without violating the constraints. So, here is the steps. First, start with three missionaries and three cannibals on one side of the river along with the boat. Step 2. Make a move by taking two individuals, either two missionaries or two cannibals or one of each across the river. The boat must always have at least one person on board. Step 3. Ensure that at no point in time on either side of the river, the number of cannibals exceeds the number of missionaries. Step 4. Repeat the steps until all individuals are safely transported to the other side of the river. So, key insights solving this problem requires careful consideration of the boat strips to maintain the constants and ensure the safety of the missionaries. The common approach to solve the puzzle is by using various search algorithms such as depth first search or breadth first search to systematically explore possible states and find a valid sequence of moves. So, our takeaway from the last lecture. The missionaries and cannibals problem serves as a classic example of state space search problem in artificial intelligence. It challenges us to think critically about solving complex puzzles while adhering to specific rules and constraints. The problem highlights the importance of efficient search algorithm and problem solving strategies. At the heart of many AI applications lies to need to search through vast problem space to find solutions, whether it is finding the shortest route or a map or solving puzzles. Search algorithm provide us with the tools to navigate this space efficiently. Let us start our journey by exploring uninformed search algorithms. These are methods that traverse a problem space without utilizing any specific knowledge about the problem. So, what is uninformed search? Uninformed search algorithms are strategies used to traverse or explore a search space without having any specific information about the problem other than the available actions and transitions. Here are some common uninformed search algorithm. First, breadth first search BFS explores the search space level by level, visiting all nodes at a certain depth before moving to the next depth level, guarantees finding the shortest path in unweighted graphs. Second, depth first search DFS explores a branch of the search space as deeply as possible before backtracking may not guarantee the shortest path and can get stuck in deep branches. Third, depth limited search 
similar to DFS but limits the depth of exploration to avoid getting lost in deep branches. Helps mitigate the infinite loop issues in cyclic graphs. Fourth, iterative deepening depth first search. Combine the advantages of BFS and DFS by repeating applying DFS with increasing depth limits. Ensure optimal paths and uses memory more efficiently than BFS. Fifth, uninformed cost search. Explore the search space by considering the cost of each path. NQ nodes in the priority queue based on the accumulated path cost. Six, bidirectional search. Simultaneously explore the search space from both the initial and goal states meeting in the middle. Reduces the search space and improves efficiency. Seventh, backtracking. Recursively explores all possible paths. Backtracking when a dead end is reached. Commonly used for problem with constraints optimization. Brute force search. Exhaustively search through all possible states or solutions suitable for problem with a manageable numbers of states. Ninth, random search. Generates random sequences of actions to explore the search space. Can be useful in situations where other methods are not applicable or efficient. It's important to note that uninformed search algorithm can be effective in a specific context, but they may not always be the most efficient or optimal solution. The choice of algorithm depends on the problem's characteristics, constants and available resources. Using the diagram as shown in the figure, one classic example of uninformed search is breadth first search BFS. Imagine it as if you are exploring a mage level by level, starting from the initial state and expanding all possible actions before moving to the next depth level. DFS, depth first search on the other hand, deals deep into the branch of the search tree before backtracking. It's like exploring a single path until you hit a dead end before trying another one. Now let's elevate our search strategy with informed search algorithms. These methods use domain specific knowledge to guide the search and make more informed decisions. So what is informed search? Informed search algorithms are strategies that make use of additional information often in the form of heuristic or estimates to guide the search process towards the goal more efficiently. Here are some common informed search algorithms. First, greedy best first search expands nodes based solely on their heuristic value, prioritizing nodes that appear closest to the goal according to the heuristic estimate. Second, A star search. Combine the cost of reaching a node, actual path cost with a heuristic estimate of the cost to the goal. Chooses nodes with the lowest combined cost, ensuring an optimal path when the heuristic is admissible. Third, iterative deepening A a memory efficient variant of A that employs depth first search with iterative depending and uses a cutoff threshold based on a heuristic. Fourth, sequential heuristic search uses multiple heuristic function to guide the search often resulting in more informed and efficient exploration. This informed search algorithms leverage domain specific information to make a smarter decision during the search process, often resulting in faster and more efficient exploration of the search space compared to uninformed search methods. The choice of algorithms depends on the problem's characteristics, the quality of the heuristic and the available resources. At the heart of informed search are heuristic function which estimate the cost from a given state 
to the goal state. This estimates help algorithm prioritizing promising paths. A star search is a prime example of informed search. It combines the actual cause to reach a state with the heuristic estimate to make intelligent decision about which nodes to expand. Greedy best first search, another informed search algorithm focuses slowly on the heuristic estimate and chooses the path that appears to the closest to the goal regardless of the path cost. So whether you are navigating a mage or solving complex puzzles, search algorithm are trusty comparisons. Uninformed search explores without much prior knowledge, while informed search leverages domain specific wisdom to make more efficient decisions. Remember, AI is like a grand puzzle and search algorithm are our puzzle solving tools. By understanding and mastering these techniques, we unlock the potential to solve a myriad of challenges and pave the way for a smarter and more efficient future. So here is the relation between breadth first search for graph and tree traversal. Traversal or search for a graph is similar to the breadth first search of a tree. The only catch here is that unlike trees, graph may contain cycles. So we may come to the sum nodes again to avoid processing a node more than once. We divide the vertices into two categories, visited and non-visited. A Boolean visited array is used to mark the visited vertices. For simplicity, it is assumed that all vertices are reachable from the starting vertex. BFS uses a Q data structure for traversal. Breadth first search in AI follow explorer of artificial intelligence. Today we are embarking on a thrilling journey into the depth of search algorithms beginning with the ever fascinating breadth first search. Imagine you are in a vast mage seeking the shortest path to a hidden treasure. Breadth first search is your reliable companion helping you explore this mage in a systematic and organized manner. Let's say we have a graph with nodes and edges. We begin at initial state, our starting point in the diagram with nodes and edges. BFS expands the initial state, generating all its neighbors nodes. These neighbors represent the possible action or path we can take from the current state. Now BFS moves to the next layer, exploring all nodes at this depth before progressing to the next layer. It's like mapping out the mage one step at a time. As we continue expanding and exploring, we eventually reach our goal state, making our successful journey through the mage improvise. Isn't it? Breadth first search guarantees that we find the shortest path ensuring we explore all possibilities before venturing deeper. However, keep in mind that BFS toughness comes at a cost. It requires ample memory to store all the nodes in the current layer and become inefficient if the search space is vast. So there you have it, breadth first search a reliable companion for navigating complex problem space. By exploring level by level, BFS helps us unveil the hidden games within the vast mage of possibilities. Remember my fellow adventurers, as you dive into the realm of artificial intelligence and search algorithm, breadth first search is your trusty map or chart the course towards optimal solutions. Here is the breadth first search algorithm. Breadth first search is an uninformed search algorithm that systematically explore a graph or tree level by level, starting from the initial state and moving outward to adjacent nodes before exploring deeper levels. BFS is commonly used to find the shortest path from a 
starting node to a goal node in unweighted graphs. Here are the algorithm steps. Step 1. Initialize a queue data structure to store nodes yet to be explored. Step 2. Enqueue the initial state that means a starting node into the queue. Step 3. Create a set or hash table to keep track of visited nodes to avoid revisiting them. Step 4. While the queue is not empty, A. Dequeue a node from the front of the queue. B. If the dequeued node is the goal node, then the search is complete and the path is found. C. If the dequeued node has not been visited, step I, mark the node as visited. Step 2 of the above, generate all possible successor nodes from the current node. Step 3, enqueue the unvisited successor nodes into the queue. Here are the key points. BFS explores nodes level by level, ensuring that the nodes at a slower depth are visited before moving to deeper levels. BFS guarantees that the shortest path is found because it explores nodes in the order of their distance from the initial state. It is suitable for finding the shortest path in unweighted graphs. BFS is implemented using a queue which follow the first in first out FIFO principle. So how does BFS work? Starting from the root, all the nodes at a particular level are visited first and then the nodes of the next level are traversed till the nodes are visited. To do this, a queue is used. All the adjacent unvisited nodes of the current level are pushed into the queue and the nodes of the current level are marked, visited and popped from the queue. So here is the illustration. Let us understand the working of the algorithm with the help of following example. Step 1. Initially Q and visited array are empty. In the diagram, Q and visited array are empty initially. Step 2. Push node 0 into Q and mark it visited. In the diagram, push node 0 into Q and mark it visited. Step 3. Remove node 0 from the front of the queue and visit the unvisited neighbors and push them into queue. In the diagram, remove node 0 from the front of queue and visited the unvisited neighbors and push into the queue. Step 4. Remove node 1 from the front of the queue and visit the unvisited neighbors and push them into the queue. In the diagram, remove node 1 from the front of the queue and visited the unvisited neighbors and push step 5, remove node 2 from the front of the queue and visit the unvisited neighbors and push them into queue. In the diagram, remove node 2 from the front of the queue and visit the unvisited neighbors and push them into the queue. Step 6, remove node 3 from the front of the queue and visit the unvisited neighbors and push them into the queue. As we can see that every neighbors of node 3 is visited. So move to the next node that are in the front of the queue. In the diagram, remove node 3 from the front of the queue and visit the unvisited neighbors and push them into queue. Step 7. Remove node 4 from the front of the queue and visit the unvisited neighbors and push them into queue. As we can see that every neighbors of node 4 are visited. So move to the next node that is in the front of the queue. In the diagram, remove node 4 from the front of the queue and visit the unvisited neighbors and push them into queue. Now, Q become empty, so terminate this process of iteration. So
so finally we have solved the bfs search so here are the advantages of bfs first guarantees finding the shortest path second suitable for finding solution with the least number of steps step 3 advantages 3 simple to understand and implement so here are the disadvantages of bfs may require a significant amount of memory to store the queue and visited nodes especially in large search spaces in some cases bfs may explore many nodes before finding the goal which can be inefficient so here we have another example consider the following graph a b c d e f starting from node a a bfs travels would visit the node in the order a b c d e f so here is the conclusion bfs is powerful algorithm for exploring and finding the shortest path in unweighted graphs its systematic approach guarantees an optimal solution but might require a trade off in terms of memory consumption understanding bfs is fundamental to grasping the essence of search algorithm in artificial intelligence and computer science finding the time and space complexity of breadth first search breadth first search involves analyzing the number of nodes visited and the memory used during the search let's break down the process step by step so time complexity of breadth first search the time complexity of breadth first search depends on the number of nodes expanded and the branching factor of the search tree let b the average branching factor let let d be the depth of the goal node in the worst case bfs explore all nodes at depth 1 then all nodes at depth 2 and so on until it reaches the goal node therefore the total number of nodes expanded is total nodes expanded is equal to 1 plus b plus b square plus dash 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 plus b to the power d using the formula for sum of a generic series total nodes expanded is equal to b to the power d plus 1 minus 1 divided by b minus 1 hence the time complexity of breadth first search is order of b to the power d where b is the branching factor and d is the depth of the goal node space complexity of breadth first search the space complexity of breadth first search depends on the maximum number of nodes stored in memory at any given time this includes nodes in the queue and nodes that have been visited at the first level bfs stores one node at the second level bfs stores two nodes at the third level bfs stores four nodes and so on in the worst case bfs stores all nodes at the maximum depth d in the queue since the queue can hold up to b to the power d nodes at this level the maximum space complexity is order of b to the power d note in a graph with a high branching factor and shallow goals depth breadth first search may require significant time and memory the time and space complexity analysis assumes a tree structure in a graph with cycles breadth first search should keep track of visited nodes to avoid revisiting them in summary the time complexity of breadth first search is order of b to the power d and the space complexity is order of b to the power d where b is the branching factor and d is the depth of the swallowest goal node this complexity help us understand the efficiency and resource requirements of bfs in solving search problems breadth first search is a fundamental graph traversal algorithm used to explore and solve problem in various fields including computer science artificial intelligence and data analysis Here is a concise summary of breadth first search. Breadth first search is an uninformed graph traversal algorithm that systematically explores a graph or tree level by level, starting from a given source node 
it explores all immediate neighbors of a node before moving on to their neighbors ensuring that nodes at solover level are visited before deeper levels so here are the key characteristics first queue based approach bfs uses a queue data structure to keep track of nodes to be explored following first in first out fifo principle shortest path bfs guarantees finding the shortest path from the source node to all reachable nodes in an unweighted graph third completeness bfs is complete for finite graphs meaning it will eventually find the goal if it exists fourth optimality bfs provide an optimal solution in terms of the number of ages or steps to reach the goal but not necessarily in terms of age weights or cost so we have upcoming lecture on depth first search so fellow learners in our next lecture video we are diving hand first into the world of depth first search a fascinating exploration strategy in the realm of search algorithm thank you for watching and we will see you in the next lecture